So today's story I'm actually gonna, I'm reading to you. This is from somewhat of a diary. And he describes here the Maimer Shavuz. Here's the history. I'll translate. Every year, well, we'll see which years it was. It was from 19, Tavshin Beis, 1952, to Tavshin Lamed Aleph, 1971. So every year, three o'clock in the morning of Shavuos. Tavshin Beis, Tavshin Beis is, is 1942. Uh -huh. Is what 51? 52. No, 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 you're right. You're, you're right. I thought you said base. Sorry. So every year, the Rebbe, for three o'clock in the morning, Shavuos morning, would enter into the Zal, the big Zal in 770. And there already the Chassidim were waiting, pressed. And the Rebbe, his face, and the Tmimim, the Chassidim, the Tmimim, his face on fire, would tie a handkerchief around his hand. As the custom of the Rebbeim, when they said, Divre Lekim Chaim, Chzidis, when we begin with the begin a Maimer on the Pasuk, one of the Pasukim connect with Matan Taira. The Rebbe's voice, as the Maimer continued, became stronger and stronger. And his fiery, holy words illuminated like sapphires as the Chzidim listened attentively, attentively rooted to their place in concentration, hearing the Torah anew, Pnim Torah. This wondrous scene began on the night of Shavuos, 1952, Tavshin Yud Beis. A year and a half after the Rebbe accepted the Nesiyas. The crowd that, that filled was no downstairs Zal. It was all upstairs, the small shul of 770. Everybody saying Tikkun. Many have finished already St. Tikkun and went to immerse Tfilas Tahara, I'm just connected to what we're learning now. Tfilas Tahara in the nearby Mikvah, the Karastiri Mikvah, the corner of Eastern Parkway in Kingston. All of a sudden, the Rebbe's appears at the entranceway to the small shul upstairs. The Rebbe's face is luminous, shining. Where is everyone that I'm asked? So the ones that were still there said that uh, most people went to the mikveh. The Rebbe said, and where's Yael? Rabbi Yael, the Chayzer, he's also in the mikveh. They said, yes. The Rebbe made, no. And without saying anything, he sat in his place and, start, and said to start a nigan, the Maimon nigan. This was a great surprise. Nobody expected this Maimon at this hour. And as Mamish, this is a dawn, the time when the Torah was given by Shmuel Sabaika. So the people pressed forward to hear around the Rebbe, and one of them ran to the mikveh to tell them the Rebbe is saying chsidis, and they all rushed back to 770. The Rebbe closed his holy, holy eyes and with a special nigger and a melody began Hamisha Kinyonim Kwanakash Borchel led by Lombari. Five acquisitions they wish to acquire in his world, Torah and so on, from Pikri office. From that time on, every year, three o'clock in the morning, this was the time set for the Divre Le Kim Chaim Dach, Divre Le Kim Chaim, Chassidus that the Rebbe would say. And so it was the Seder. That after he finished the meal upstairs in the apartment of the Fidik Rebbe in the second floor, he would go to his holy room, everybody said, Tikkun in the nearby shul. And then around three o'clock, everybody would come close to the table of the Fabrengen, standing in readiness to receive the Rebbe's countenance and to hear the Maimed. Exactly three o'clock, he would enter. Silence would immediately reign. The Rebbe ascended the small platform, sat on his place and began with the Maimed, with the handkerchief wrapped around his hand. His holy eyes closed. His voice heard throughout the Beis Medrash, and the, most often the mind would begin with the words of Yibri Mashlish and it was on the third day of the separation at dawn, or Beshoshal Meshal Amarim, and Mesha ascended on high, or Beshosh Yigdim, we saw Nasr and Ishma when the Yidin prefaced Nasr and Ishma, and the angels descended, and so on. 
these wondrous words about Matan Torah, which issued forth from the Rebbe's holy mouth, elevated every, all the listeners who listened with great attentiveness and concentrated not to lose even a single word and to absorb every subject, every nuance. Each one, according to his level, was lifted to a holy state, unique, unparalleled any other time. Uh, he's quoting here from a diary of one of the chassidim who were there for many years of the Maimah, which was in the morning. The Maimah would, would, uh, would, be, would be usually uh, around 40 minutes. And then the Rebbe, would, when it concluded, he would stand, his face aflame, the handkerchief still wrapped around his ha holy hand and leave the shul. Soon the maimer was over, Chassidim sat to review the maimer. Everybody standing around the chayzrim and listening to the maimer repeated again and again until, until the sun's rays. What people felt at this awesome time, we can learn from a diary that someone wrote after Shavuos of 1956. The Hasid writes, or the, the Bacher perhaps, quote, I'm translating, the Maimed that was said in the morning, that in each morning, the, in the night of Shavuos, is a godly visage, not of this world. And we wait for this with longing eyes, more for this more than anything else in the course of the year. And this year too, as always, the emotion, the feeling was such that once it stands at sight, I remember, he says, the Maimed that Rebbe said the year previous to the diary, the Rebbe's face of flame in the middle when the Rebbe said the words, Chazal tell us that just like then, people, the Yidin heard the Torah with awe and trembling and, 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 uh, and so on, so too now with awe and fear and trembling, he said these words, it appeared to me, says the writer, that the table and the chair and the tablecloth began all of a sudden to shake for a few moments like, like a tremor, like an earth tremor. At first I thought that my eyes were deceiving me, but after the mimer, I heard from others, they saw the same thing, and a dread fell upon us by he lapel, and it was something of great wonder. All this ended in the year Tavshin Aleph, 1971, the year of the passing of the Rebbe Sinacham Medina, wife of the Fidik Rebbe. The Rebbe no longer ate the Yom Tov meals in the apartment, the house of the Fidik Rebbe, but, is in, but in his own home. Shavuos night, Rebbe would go home on President Street and remain there till the morning. The traditional mimer was then no longer Shavuos morning, but transferred as it were, to the Fabrengen that the Rebbe held on the second day of Shavuos towards evening. Finally, it is an, it's a wondrous thing. The last mime we heard from the Rebbe, the last mime until Mashiach comes, which the Rebbe said in the mime ending and so on, was Erev Shavuos 1989. And that was a great shock. And had me saying my modem. Uh, for a while before that, since the passing of the Rebbe, what happened was it was the night before Shavuos. He had gone to the oil, he came back at Daf Maidiv, and all of a sudden, indicated after Maidiv he wants to speak. They brought the Shtender to him, and to the to the shock of everyone, I remember he heard it live. Began with the melody of a mimer. The, the emotion was very great then. Everybody realized they were at some historic moment. And this mime was the last one that ever said till now. And uh, it, it has special place in the heart of Chassidim. And the mime was uh, edited by the Rebbe and subsequently published in Sifa Marim I don't know if he learned it, but it's something that, uh, of course, we all should. Okay, my friends, have a wonderful day. Baruch
And Yeshua said a fool is for Cloud Yisroel. Hashem, welcome heart and strengthen everyone. And please stay tuned again for Amen. something we're going to be holding in connection with the tragedy of Lagba Stay tuned for a notification. Be well, everybody. Zayi Gizant.